In fluid statics and its application, first of all, we have to understand what is fluid statics. Basically, this is a whole branch which is known as fluid mechanics. How this fluid mechanics is branch of engineering which deals with the behavior of fluid at rest or in motion. That is known as fluid mechanics. Uh, so I can say that this fluid mechanics is divided into two parts. One is fluid statics and another is fluid dynamic. Now what is this fluid statics and fluid dynamics? Basically fluid statics deals with the study of fluid at rest. So when we study the fluid behavior, particularly when it is in a rest condition, it is known as fluid statics. On another hand, what is fluid dynamics? Fluid dynamics basically deals with the study of fluid in motion relative to the stationary solid walls. That means when we study the behavior of a fluid when it is in motion, at that time it is known as fluid dynamics. So one branch of engineering is known as fluid mechanics and that fluid mechanics is divided into two categories fluid statics and fluid dynamics. Fluid statics deals with the study of fluid when it is in rest and fluid dynamics is the study of fluid when it is in motion. So this is the basic idea of fluid mechanics, fluid statics and fluid dynamics. Now next topic is what is fluid? First of all we have to understand what is the meaning of fluid. How we can define fluid? We can define fluid in different different ways. First is a fluid is a substance which is capable of flowing if allowed to do so. We all know very well that fluid is capable of flowing. So I can define a fluid that a substance which is capable of flowing. Another definition of the fluid is a fluid is a substance that has no definite shape of its own but it confirms the shape of the containing vessel. So the substance which has no definite shape of its own but it confirms the shape of the vessel that is known as fluid. And last definition of the fluid is a substance which undergoes continuous deformation when subjected to shear force. When a substance is subjected to shear force, it goes under continuous deformation. That is also known as a fluid. So these are the different different definitions of the fluid. Fluid can be defined in this different different ways. So what comes under fluid? Liquid and gas. Both substances comes under the category of fluid and fluid can be defined in these three different ways. Now let us see another topic which is classification of fluid. How we can classify the fluid? We can classify the fluid in two different ways. First based upon the behavior of fluid under the action of externally applied pressure and temperature. So based on externally applied pressure and temperature, fluid can be defined, can be classified in two ways. One is compressible fluid and another is incompressible. Now what is compressible fluid and incompressible fluid? Compressible fluid is a fluid which undergoes or which in which density of the fluid changes with externally applied pressure and temperature. So if we change the pressure and temperature, the density of the fluid is changes, then it is known as compressible fluid. 
and opposite to that if pressure and temperature is changes and density of the fluid remains unaffected by that then it is known as incompressible understood so that is first classification of the fluid based upon the externally applied pressure and temperature that is compressible fluid and incompressible next classification is based upon the behavior of fluid under the action of shear stress then we can classify the fluid as newtonian fluid and non newtonian what is newtonian fluid and non newtonian fluid newtonian fluid is that fluid which obeys newton's law of viscosity and non newtonian fluid is the fluid which does not obeys newton's law of viscosity now what is newton's law of viscosity that we will study in our further topics so we can classify the fluid like this in two different ways compressible fluid and incompressible fluid and newtonian and non newtonian now next is the concept of pressure this concept of pressure is very important when we are dealing with fluid statics or i can say that when we are studying the behavior of fluid when it is in rest condition at that time pressure is very important so i can say that pressure is a basic property of static fluid now what is this pressure pressure is the force exerted by fluid per unit area so p is equals to f by a where p is pressure f is force and a is unit area fine so now what is the unit of pressure force per unit area that means newton per meter square this pressure parameter is very important while we are studying the fluid statics and next is what is pressure head the vertical height or free surface above any point in the liquid at rest is called as the pressure head so pressure head is nothing but the height of the liquid height above the free surface of the liquid is known as pressure head so this is about the concept of pressure which is very important while we are studying the fluid statics now let us see one small derivation which is for hydrostatic equilibrium to understand about hydrostatic equilibrium we have taken our we have taken here one example you can see that there is a vertical column in which which is filled with a fluid in that we have taken one small element you can see in the figure we have taken one small element of the fluid having height dh you can see in the figure the total height of the small element is dh area of the column will be a and the fluid which is filled in the column having density rho now what is hydrostatic equilibrium hydrostatic equilibrium is nothing but when the fluid element is in equilibrium equilibrium or the forces acting on that small element must be zero resultant of all the forces acting on that element must be zero at that time it is known as in equilibrium so for that we have to consider all the forces acting on that small element of the fluid so let us start first force which is acting in the downward direction that means in the downward direction like this so force is what pressure into area so force which is acting in downward direction will be p plus dpa now in this we have to take any one direction forces will be positive and another will be negative 
so here you can see that force is p plus dp into a which is acting downward so i have taken it as negative second is gravity force gravity force is also acting in downward direction and we know that how we can write gravity force mass into acceleration in place of mass i can write that volume into density so v into rho into g and in place of volume we can write area into height and height of the small element is dh so a dh rho g will be my gravity force and it is also acting in downward direction so take it take it as negative and force which is acting in upward direction in upward direction the pressure is p so force is p into a and for upward direction we have taken positive sign fine so these are the three forces which is acting on this small element this is the small element having height dh at height h from the bottom of the column downward the pressure which is acting in upward is p and downward is p plus dp that we have assumed now as the fluid element is in equilibrium the resultant of all the forces acting on it must be zero so now what we have to do we are going to do the summation of all the forces so see here pa minus adh rho g minus p plus dpa is equals to 0 now just we are simplifying the equation so this positive and negative pa will be cancel out and the final equation will be dp plus dh rho g is equals to 0 this is the basic equation to calculate pressure at any height of the column now we are going to apply this equation for two different cases for incompressible fluid and for compressible fluid so for case 1 which is incompressible fluid we all know that what is the basic meaning of incompressible fluid the fluid in which density is independent of pressure so in this our basic equation which is dp plus dh rho g for incompressible fluid density is independent so in dp plus dh rho g is equals to 0 we are just integrating the equation because this density is independent of pressure as the fluid is incompressible fluid so integration dp plus rho g integration dh is equals to 0 integration of dp will be p and dh will be h so p plus h rho g is equals to constant now we have assume that at height h equals to 0 the pressure is some value p1 and at height h pressure is some value p2 so integrating for the limits p1 to p2 dp is equals to minus rho g integration 0 to h dh just putting the limits in the integration after integrating and simplifying we can get that p1 minus p2 is equals to h rho g so this is the equation to calculate pressure at any height h for incompressible fluid p1 minus p2 is equal to h rho g now let us take the another example of compressible fluid what is compressible fluid the fluid with in which the density varies with pressure if we consider for ideal gas the density is given by the equation rho is equal to pm by rt what is this p is pressure m is molecular weight of the gas r is gas constant and t is absolute temperature this is the formula for calculating density in case of ideal gas so in our basic equation of dp plus dh rho g put the value of rho is equal to pm by rt so by putting that value of rho dp plus pm by rt dh rho dh g is equal to 0 now simplify that for integration so we are collecting the p terms so 
dp by p plus gm by rt dh is equal to 0. Now, after integration, ln p plus gm by rt h is equal to constant. Again, here we are taking two limits at height h1 and h2, pressure will be p1 and p2. So, putting that limits in the integration, ln p2 by p1 is equal to minus gm h2 minus h1 upon rt. I am taking ln this side. So, what will be the final equation? p2 by p1 is equal to exponential of minus gm by rt h2 minus h1. This is the equation to calculate pressure at any height h, particularly for compressible liquid. And this equation is known as barometric equation. Clear? So, this is all about the fluid statics. So, in today's session, we have covered the basics of fluid statics, concept of pressure, classification of the fluid and hydrostatic equilibrium. I hope this is clear to all. Thank you.